Hello and welcome. You're watching Coronavirus Facts versus Myths. I'm Gargi Rawat. Up first, let's focus on Kerala. COVID cases continue to rise there. Uh, Kerala reported 31,445 new cases and 215 deaths on Wednesday after a gap of three months. In fact, in 24 hours, the state has reported a jump of 30% in cases, while the test positivity rate soared to an alarming 19.03%. Now, the spike is being attributed to Onam, one of the major festivals of the state state that was celebrated on the 21st of August, but it's really given a lot of worry to authorities, especially the center, which has warned other states about upcoming festivities. To talk more about the situation in Kerala, we're joined by Dr. Sulfi Nohu, state president-elect, IMA Kerala. Thank you so much, doctor, for joining us again. And we've spoken to you before about, you know, what is happening in Kerala? Where is the Kerala model going, going wrong? And once again, you've had this spike, which I know it was expected given, uh, you know, how rules uh, were uh, some what uh, loosened ahead of uh, Onam festivities. Uh, what is the focus now? Because the centre has said that Kerala is not doing enough contact tracing. Yeah, the, the cases is, uh, cases are more uh, now. The test positivity is also high. Uh, but uh, definitely, uh, we have to concentrate on uh, the vaccination. Uh, vaccination is the vaccination must be the first priority. And uh, definitely, the, the relaxations uh, during the one holidays and uh, just before that um, uh, has contributed for this increase in cases. But definitely, we have to fight this. Uh, so. Um, Contact tracing, definitely. The contact tracing, uh, we have to interest, uh, we have to give more responsibility to the health professionals. Uh, it was earlier uh, in between. And earlier it was done by the health professionals and later it was changed over to the um, you know, local self-government uh, staff. Now, I think the government is uh, cha uh, shifting that uh, responsibility to the, uh, to the health workers also. We have to uh, do that. And also, we have to do more, more testing. And um, um, and I think uh, yesterday we did around 0.67 tests, and uh, we have to increase that test to uh, more than two lakhs per day to find out uh, uh, more cases. And now, I think if you see, if you closely watch the data, uh, uh, first thing, uh, 200 plus deaths, uh, but definitely that's a cumulative total of uh, uh, previous few days also. So that's not an, that is definitely any, any death is a problem, but then uh, it's not 205 for a single day. It was a cumulative total of a uh, few. All right, few. but Kerala is reporting over 100 deaths every day. So that does remain a yes. worry while, you know, I know all of you have said that our hospitals aren't overwhelmed, but even then the deaths are a worry. Yeah, definitely. They say any, any death is a worry and if a uh, hundred people are dying every day is definitely, uh, definitely um, uh, due to any infection, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big problem. We have to control that. We have to uh, prevent that. But if you closely watch uh, uh, one thing, you know, the hospital admissions are less. The vaccine is playing, you know, the vaccine is, um, is, 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 uh, is, is the change, you know, the game changer. And uh, uh, we have less number of people in the in the ventilators. That is a, a very good thing, you know, very th good thing to happen. We have uh, the, the hospital admissions um, for the last few weeks. It's, it's just around uh, uh, 2,000, 2,500 for the last few days. Uh, so uh, definitely the cases are uh, more. And if, if, if it is going exponentially high we'll be in trouble but uh, at this rate we can expect uh, more cases in the coming days uh, definitely and, and doctor, uh, but, exactly uh, so dr sulfi you are expecting you know this onam surge to continue it's going to impact for uh, a couple of days now and, and that's also very worrying yes absolutely and definitely the cases may go up to maybe maybe 50000 but we we will we'll be worried only if the hospitals are getting you know full and icu admissions are more and and if you i, I want to i want to emphasize this point if you watch carefully the the, the patients uh, on in, on ventilators and they're all or majority of them are uh, unvaccinated people that is very unfortunate if you are vaccinated and definitely you get a mild illness that is the um, uh, that is what is happening in kerala and in all over the world definitely the vaccine is playing uh, so uh, i think we but are if actually uh, if you speak about vaccines then kerala is doing the best i mean you you vaccinated the maximum number if you compare with other states but you've also had many breakthrough cases which is uh, you know again it, it's great that to to catch those breakthrough cases but you're saying the very serious cases of covid right now are among the unvaccinated Absolutely. See, we have, we have around 60,000 uh, people have uh, got uh, at least a single dose and uh, around 25% people have got uh, both doses. Uh, so, but um, uh, we have to increase that uh, vaccination. We have so many other, uh, you know, the Kela peculiarities there, our humidity is different, our population density, so many that we have discussed it several times. Uh, so, there are several reasons for increased number of cases in, in, in Kerala. Uh, so, breakthrough infections, coming to breakthrough infections, it's happening all over the world and Definitely, since the Kerala is showing a high number of cases, the breakthrough infections are more. But 
remember the breakthrough infections are very very mild and it is you know that is what is happening breakthrough infections are happening all over the world and we have around 50000 plus that is uh, comparing to the total number of vaccination given is not a very high number and moreover uh, uh, the impact or maybe the seriousness of the illness uh, for the breakthrough infections are less all right well we'll continue you know to track the numbers in kerala but very very worrying given that 68% of india's uh, yeah. cases in the last 24 hours have only come Absolutely. from kerala thank you so much uh, dr sulfi for joining us on the program Now the second big focus on the show a study has found that arterial stiffness is being noticed beyond the normal limit among moderate and severe patients of covid this poses a threat to the patient's cardiovascular health as well as kidney function now the study was carried out by a group of doctors at the patna based all india institute of medical sciences in a 3 month duration during the peak of the pandemic and it found cases of arterial stiffness in a majority of covid patients to so talk more about this we're joined by dr neeraj kumar the lead researcher on the study at aims patna thank you so much dr kumar for joining us thank you. so you know a lot has been spoken about uh, long covid and the impact that covid has on other parts of the body not just the lungs so if you could explain the findings of your study uh basically uh, what we have done uh, is uh, is uh, it's not a very newer thing but it's newer thing for this covid 19 why because these arterial stiffness is happening in non covid era also but what we thought of uh, why we thought of doing this study because what we thought ki whether these arterial stiffness is related to this sars cov 2 virus why so because these the, there are various ace receptors that that express in these vessels and what has happened is that once a virus enters into it it binds to that ace receptors and these ACE receptors are mostly predominantly present in most of the vessels leading to the endothelitis or endothelial changes or uh, its consequences so what has happened in our study that uh, initially we have taken a uh, lots of uh, lots of practicing on that we have we have uh, club our entire study group into three parts where we have uh, taken a mild group of patient moderate group of patient and then severe group of patient based, based on the latest nih criteria and after taking proper consent from the patient uh, patient as well as patient relative uh, they were found enrolled in the study groups and all those patients whom the age group was more than 18 years and they have they are needing a hospitalization as, at at our aims patna and after fulfilling all our inclusion criteria they were included in our study but what was the important thing in our study that we have omitted all those patients who were previously suffering from any form of hypertension any form of diabetes any form of peripheral arterial disease any form of cerebral stroke you can say and any form of uh, myocardial infarction or renal disease all those patients we have were excluded out and after fulfilling all those inclusion criteria we categorized these patient into three groups so uh, what our finding was that it was a very striking differences in all those of groups of patients in the patients who have found very severe suppose the patient is having a very severe covid 19 his right. spo2 saturation less than 90% respiratory rate falling more than 35 in these groups of patient the arterial stiffness was found so much in a higher range normally you can say that in in non covid patients so these reasons, were only hospitalized patients so those who had you yeah. know serious enough disease to be hospitalized they are the ones who who have been observed yeah. with this yeah but in our hospitals we initially hospitalized all those patients who are having a mild symptoms or with a moderate symptoms because all okay. those moderate group of patient needs hospitalization any time but in between we are getting that mild group of patient because at that time patna aims was catering so much of patients so we thought that we we could take it as a, a control group also so we compared it with a mild group and in our mild group the total number of patients were 23 and in severe group of patient the 20 patients were there and uh, what we found that the arterial stiffness values were more much higher than what in the non covid era the non covid values were not that much high and in our group it was uh, in a tune of around you can say uh, 1416 cm per second so it's very high Right and doctor yeah. is this irreversible or does this uh, you know improve after some time right uh, now now the very important question is that because now what we are now what we are uh, uh, another another study that what we are doing in right now we are 
giving some treatment to these arms of patients, right? Those are the patients who have a, a sudden rise in arterial stiffness, we have measured that arterial stiffness, then we have added some forms of treatment. So uh, basically this study is still under process and we have not included much patients. Uh, our study group flies around 120 patients, but right now the COVID cases have markedly decreased in our state also. So we have included around 50 patients. So in these 50 patients, we are getting good results. Uh, after giving those uh, treatment, we are seeing that the arterial stiffness is going down. But it's still the follow-up is, 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 lacking, is lacking because we are not following up all those patients who have been suffered from these arterial stiffness, whether it's persisting right. or, yeah. The, and and you've also spoken thing. about diabetes, which is very interesting because there's been a lot of talk about, you know, the impact of uh, and, and on COVID patients, how some develop right. diabetes post-COVID. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So these, basically, these uh, uh, blood, uh, because even the uh, in diabetes patients, the microvascular or macrovascular complications can arise in these kinds of patients. So diabetes is also important. This, although diabetes has been associated with COVID-19 in more of the cases, but our case highlights about the risk of hypertension in these groups of patients, right? And I because see. of these hypertension, yes. lots of end organ dysfunctions can occur uh, in future. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, doctor, uh, for joining us. And more studies need to be uh, done, you know, to see the impact that COVID has had on people and the long COVID uh, effects and symptoms. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's now take a look at COVID numbers in Germany as cases are rising there. They've uh, been spiked by the Delta variant. And this even as Germany has managed to vaccinate 60% of its population. Uh, to talk more about that, we're joined by Thomas Sparrow from DW in Berlin. Uh, Thomas, if you could just walk us through the new measures that have been introduced in Germany. German leaders have introduced new measures to try and curb the rising numbers in infections which are closely related to the Delta variant of the coronavirus. Basically, those who have been fully vaccinated or have recovered from the virus will be able to enjoy more or less every aspect of public life like going to museums, the cinema or meeting friends at an indoor restaurant as long as they can provide proof. Things will be more complicated for those who have not been vaccinated. They will need a negative antigen test, which until now is free for everyone, but which the unvaccinated will have to pay for themselves in the future. The goals of these measures are twofold. Make sure that public life can continue more or less interrupted and increase the pressure on those who have not yet been vaccinated. All right, but uh, isn't Germany actually doing uh, very well with its vaccination rollout after its slow start? Indeed, around 50 million Germans or 60% of the population have now received both jabs. This is more than many countries around the world and certainly a positive development if you consider the slow and difficult start to the vaccination rollout at the beginning of the year. But it's still not enough to ensure herd immunity. There is growing concern among political leaders regarding those who have refrained from getting a vaccination, but also when it comes to younger generations between the ages of 10 to 49 who have been particularly affected by the new wave of infections and whose vaccination rates are in certain age groups not as high as in the case of older Germans. Many youngsters could also face an even greater risk given the opening of schools after the summer holidays. And does this mean that Germany could face a new lockdown if the numbers continue to grow? Authorities have promised that they will not introduce lockdown restrictions like the ones Germany faced at the beginning of the year, in particular for those who are fully vaccinated. On the one hand, there is an understanding that as the vaccination numbers grow, a return to normality or some sense of normality must somehow be guaranteed instead of closing things off for longer periods. But on the other hand, there's also a political calculation behind this. Germany goes to the polls in exactly one month and political leaders are being very careful when it comes to introducing tough measures that could prove to be unpopular. All right, Thomas, thank you so much for joining us there with the latest from Berlin. With that time for us to slip into a short break, on the other side, we bring you frequently asked questions about vaccine and about COVID, and Dr. Manoj Goyal will join us to answer those questions.
Now for our special campaign, Vaccinate India in partnership with Google, where we bring you questions that are often looked up by many of you. And to answer them, we have Dr. Manoj Goyal, Director, Pulmonology, Fortis Memorial Research Institute. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us. And one of the questions that people uh, often look up is, does the presence of antibodies mean that a person is COVID immune? Yes, uh, it is one of the indicators of the immunity against the COVID infection. But there is something beyond the antibodies level. There is two cells, uh, which is another immunological response to vaccination. So even though the antibodies may be positive, it is still recommended that one should go for vaccination because that will enhance your immune response uh, against the virus. Right. And doctor, but it also doesn't mean you're completely protected against COVID. We have cases of breakthrough infections, if you could explain that. Yes, I mean, the COVID uh, breakthrough infection is called something somebody who has got already vaccinated and then develops an infection. This is not a very common phenomenon. It has been seen because no vaccination is 100 percent, you know, safe uh, or can prevent any kind of infection. But in case of COVID, it has been found that if you are vaccinated, then chances of acquiring a serious kind of infection would be less. The hospitalization is not likely to be there and uh, you may not be very much symptomatic. If at all it will be there, it will be a very mild disease. Uh, so, uh, vaccination becomes a very, very important aspect in the control of COVID infection. Right. And those who are vaccinated and if they do get COVID and uh, they don't know it, but they can still pass it on to others, isn't it? That's why. That's why we have to have multiple layers of protection. And that multiple layer of protection includes vaccination, number one. Number two, this COVID uh, appropriate behavior where the masking becomes very, very important. The hand hygiene becomes important. The cough hygiene becomes important. So just vaccinating is not enough. You still have to maintain social distancing, use the mask and continue with hand hygiene and cough hygiene practices. All right. Another question that people often Google is uh, how long does it take to develop immunity after a COVID vaccine? Uh, generally, it is believed that it takes about a month. And uh, so uh, it's very, very important that you don't think that once you got vaccinated, the next day you got the immune passport. That doesn't happen. So generally it takes about a month before the appropriate number of antibiotics or appropriate levels of antibody, antibodies develop in the blood after the vaccination. All right. And, uh, you know, people have also started uh, getting themselves tested to check their antibody levels. Uh, what would you say about that? Because they, they do that to know how well they are protected or not. That is not recommended. No the scientific body, CDC or FDA has approved it. it developing antibody, as we were discussing, does not mean that you've got the uh, the appropriate immune response. That is not and uh, that is not the thing. And similarly, somebody who has not developed antibodies after the uh, COVID vaccination uh, does not mean uh, the uh, you know the uh, the uh, uh, the vaccine has not proven to be effective. So that is not recommended because there are other aspects of the immunological response which I said T cells. So that that is something that is not routinely measured. So after vaccination, it is not recommended that you go for your antibody level uh, measurements. All right, because people often get very anxious if they find their antibody levels dipping. And, and doctor, but uh, now we're also talking about, you know, the immunity waning from the vaccine and, you know, booster doses. It, several countries have announced booster doses for their population. Uh, what do we know so far? Uh, we don't know much about it, but it is believed that after the vaccination, you know, the immunity may last for about a year. But some people believe that it may be even longer. But definitely it is a fact that as the time passes, the immunological response of the body wanes over a period of time. Therefore, especially vulnerable group, those who are immunocompromised, both those who are in immunosuppressive therapy like cancer patients. Then in those cases, it is now thought that a third booster dose may be given to those patients to maintain the immunological response. All right. And so that's as far. But right now in India, at least the focus is only on uh, vaccinating everyone and covering as much of the population. And it's especially important to get both doses of the vaccine, because that's also something that we need to emphasize. Yes. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, uh, immunizing a large population uh, is a real priority. And the, the, I think the government is doing the right job because the more the people get vaccinated, more is the chance of developing herd immunity. So what herd immunity will do, those who have not got even got vaccinated, uh, may be prevented from getting infected. So that idea of, you know, first vaccinating the population uh, as a whole, and then we may start thinking of, you know, giving the uh, uh, subsequent doses as a booster doses in those who require it. All right. Thank you so much, doctor, for joining us. Thank you.